my first time trying to review on this channel and of course this is also my first video on this channel and what's certain is that Final Fantasy is one of my favorite game franchises. Yes, from Final Fantasy 7, FF10, FF12, those are all good and I really like them. I remember when I was still a kid at the age of maybe 5 or 7, I went to my brother's house, well my cousin's house, just to watch my brother play Final Fantasy 7 on PS1. It was really really nostalgic. And note that I haven't played the original Final Fantasy 7. Yeah, I only watch my cousin play it. Now that I'm older and I have to work and now I have money and I can buy whatever I want, right? So I bought Final Fantasy 15. This Final Fantasy 15 review will be divided into several sections, including the story, graphics, combat and gameplay, and etc. I also want to say that in this review, there will be spoilers. So if you don't feel comfortable with spoilers, you can turn off this video and you know, just hug your mother, your dad, your sister, or your gay friend, I don't know, whatever suits you the best. Also note, I have played this before, so this is something like a revisit in most of the part because I played this at level 1, so it is even more difficult, and if you know me, I really like challenges, so playing like Elden Ring, Dark Souls, Final Fantasy VII Remake hard mode is exciting for me. And I always try to complete my games to go to 100%, so this took me quite some time, even though I haven't completed it, so yeah. But with that being said, let's get started to the review. Story, Final Fantasy XV is like a road trip with Prince Noctis and his buddies. It's something like a boy band to be honest. And along the way, they deal with all sorts of drama, from political power plays to battling weird supernatural stuffs. Yeah, it's so fucking weird, man. So fucking weird. And the guys learn they've got some serious destiny baggage, and that their relationship, or, you know, friendship, I mean, sorry for that, is gonna be tested big time. It is a wild ride through a world full of magic, cool creatures, and ancient mysteries leading up to a big showdown that decides the fate of everything. Oh, and there's a lot of camping and car trouble too. And it's kind of a nice touch. It's a mix between old and also modern Final Fantasy. I like it. I really do. Next up we have visuals and performance. Of course, this is always the talk of Final Fantasy XV. And yeah, they are always, always good and really good till this day. From the beginning until now, I've been playing this game because of the graphics to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it is that good. Well, if you have a potato PC, it is quite hard to play, but it is possible. There is mod that lowers the graphics so you can play even in your potato PC and the performance of this game isn't that bad. For this performance review, I tried playing this using my old PC using a GTX 1060 6GB and the CPU is i7-6700K at the highest settings and this game can get up to like 45 until 70 FPS depending on the situation and conditions. And what's more is that this game has been a long since it was released. I think it was released in 2016 or I don't know maybe 2014 for PS4 and imagine that the graphics in 2016 were still very good as still this day. I mean it is an achievement for Square Enix. And of course I also tried playing this game on my PC, I mean my main PC which uses a 4080 I mean of course 4080 is an RTX 4080 in the highest graphic settings and of course the processor or the CPU is Ryzen 7 7800X 3D and it is definitely a very 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 smooth sailing experience and it can go up to like 4K and I can get up to like 120 FPS so it is pretty goddamn cool. The first time I played this I was confused as to whether or not to buy it uh, on my PC because as I said when I bought this, I was still using my potato PC, so I didn't know whether it would lag or not, but it turns out to be fine, and it wasn't much of a big deal. 
So for those of you who are confused about whether this game can be played on your PC or not, yes, you can, of course it can. Because this game was made to be played on a PS4, and if you know, PS4 is not that powerful when compared to PC or a PS5. But of course there are some problems that I need to address, and even though the graphics are good, it is really hard to play this on an HDD, I mean if you install this game on your hard drive. The loading takes a really, really long time, so I recommend installing this game on an SSD because this is an open world game, and if you pay attention, this game uses a lot of repeatable assets. What this means is that when you go to the rest area or a restaurant or if you meet a new NPC, there are lots of the same people or the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a nitpick, I would say. But of course, it is not a problem, but it just looks funny and not good uh, sometimes. So what's more is that this NPC looks really, really dead. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Of course, again, this is just a nitpick from all the beautiful visuals, fidelity, or any graphical enhancement for this game. <laughs> Now for the gameplay, this is something that would be fun to discuss or review because there is a lot of controversy about the gameplay in this game. Because some people say that the combat is really good and some say that the combat is really bad. Well, I'll just say that the combat in FF15 is that it's not as exciting as Final Fantasy VII Remake. And if you have played Final Fantasy VII Remake, you will know that even if you compare it to FF16, FF15's combat can be said to be boring. But here is the thing, there are many people who like it because this game is an action game but very simple. So just imagine, this game has auto dodge where if you hold down the dodge button, it will dodge automatically without any obstacles. Then you can also parry, but here, for the parry, you just have to hold down the parry button. It is really strange, isn't it? Where in other games, if you want to parry, or parry or counter, same thing. You have to press the button just at the right moment so it is not holding the button. Likewise, if you want to hit the enemy, you just hold down the hit button and he will do the combo automatically himself. The gameplay can be said to be simple, but because it is too simple, many people say it is boring and not immersive. And of course, people who said that aren't in the wrong, but that doesn't mean that this game isn't fun. First thing first, I have a complaint that I want to tell you. As I said, we can auto dodge by holding the button, but there are some attacks that we cannot dodge. Like if you are sprayed with fire or for example an AoE attack, yeah, you cannot dodge that. It is annoying or frustrating. And I hate that it doesn't have an indicator. It's like you just imagine if you're playing at level 1, as for me I am playing this at level 1, and one or two or three hits can kill you and suddenly you think you are able to dodge the attack but instead you get hit. In any other game, the enemy below that cannot be avoided will definitely have an indicator. Uh, for example, here in FF7 there will be a red triangle in the in the top of the like name of the bosses and in Sekiro there will be a red Japanese writing on top. So yeah, if there's nothing, it is quite annoying and frustrating. Then suddenly we get hit and then we die. And then we have to start all over again for the boss fight or whatever or whatever fights uh, it is. That's what I don't like though. Even though the combat is simple and we can mostly dodge everything, if you want to play with no damage, I think it's going to be very difficult. I didn't say that it's not possible, but it's just difficult. So in this game, there are four of you in one party. Basically, you just control the main character, which is Noctis, and the other three is controlled by AI. So we are not the ones controlling it. But we can use skills using our friends, and there are also small events that use our friends, such as sling attacks or blindside attack. I have to admit that system is really, really cool when I first saw it, because the party members came to life. So it's like, it wasn't just, you know, mindless AI controlled and... And then the party members suddenly died. No, it's not like that. It was pretty cool at first. 
As I said, I've played this game before, so I want to challenge myself to play this game at level 1. So, you cannot level up, that's basically it. Simple, right? I want to see how difficult it is for this game, which is said to be boring. Maybe, you know, playing this at level 1 is not gonna be boring and making the combat more exciting. And man, it is quite controversial too <laughs> okay so honestly firstly yes it is really easy there's no problem at all uh, with skipping some of the side quests or main quests at first you know at the earlier stages of the game but over time it becomes more and more difficult especially if you don't have a lot of money to buy some potions or weapons so when I played this game without level 1, it was really easy. I could just hold down the attack button and get to the ending so freaking fast. But now, playing this at level 1, I do realize something. That food is really important here. Food in this game is really important. You can get, you know, like attack buffs, HP up or resist uh, to poison and etc. That is really important because it really helps you. And if you play this at level 1, your defense, HP, or attack won't be increased. Except from the food and equipment, of course. It is more difficult, especially when fighting a boss, you can get hit or, you know, you can die in two or three hits. So, how do you get food here? We can buy food or go camping. First thing first, I wanna tackle in this camping uh, stuff because it is really good. It's funny and good at the same time. In this game, there is camping. And if you take a look at this, this is the first game to include a food system for buffing and now everyone is following it. What's funny is that if we go camping, we can get cutscenes where we chat with our friends like Prompto, Ignis, or Gladiolus and we can get a cute mini games and I really like mini games in a lot of Final Fantasy like this because this is Final Fantasy where there is seriousness and there are also little fun things to do so that we remember that you know, it's just a game and game used to make us smile and happy when we play it so this does the job really really well so you don't have to take everything seriously that's what I love about Final Fantasy franchise or any other Final Fantasy games so how can you finish this game if you play it at level 1 as I said it is really difficult well it is possible even though there isn't a cure here uh, like any other Final Fantasy games but there are still magics don't worry about that I think the only way to heal here is just use potions and those potions are unlimited you can use that any time so basically you cannot die especially if you use a phoenix down the healing items here are really powerful it's a little sad because there are no penalties which makes this game a little bit unbalanced unlike any other FF games because for example if you have played Final Fantasy 7 Remake or any other turn-based FF games if you use a potion you skip one turn that's it so again potions in this game is quite unbalanced for me but I think that's okay because uh, they want to make this game more accessible to new players right because as you can see it is a Final Fantasy for quote-unquote first timers and the other fans so let's talk about the new game plus in this game. For most game, new game plus is basically that you carry your items which you have obtained throughout the playthrough, I mean the first playthrough, and then harder bosses. But in this game, yes, there is new game plus, but there are no new challenges. It is just a shame. It's basically the same thing, but it's just that you bring your weapon and the level you've got and repeat the game again and again but if you play it at level 1 then what's the use there is no point playing this game in new game plus if you play it at level 1 so I recommend that if you want to play this game at level 1 don't be too quick to unlock the new game plus but take your time enjoy it and if you are someone who likes getting 100% it's better to just relax and finish the mission at your first playthrough because the story in this game is not that great and there are so many loading screens and the fast traveling and then there is this, you know, riding a car, driving a car for like 5 minutes, 3 minutes, 1 minute, man, that is just wasting our time and it's not a good experience if you want to do it over again. Yeah, I don't like something that is wasting my time, so that's just for me though. Maybe for someone... It is relaxing because you know driving, listening to music, like maybe in GTA, 
you know you're always like driving and listening to music it's really relaxing and of course stopping at the red lights pretty relaxing huh for playing a gta <laughs> i know that feeling okay but for me in final fantasy 15 it's not like that at all quite wasting my time to be honest so i talked to a lot of people asking if they like the story or not and there are some who like it and some that don't really care about it and some that really hate it but mostly hate it <laughs> but they talk a little bit different when i ask them about the dlc because man god damn the dlc is fucking amazing in this game so the dlc is extra content basically telling you about gladio ignis prompto and the last dlc is telling you about arden why arden can be that bad a lot of people again said the dlc is better than the story and i do agree in this dlc you can really feel the pity when prompto is sad and the gameplay in each story is also different for example when you play the prompto dlc prompto here can aim like when you play an fps game so when i played this i was surprised that the gameplay was really different even though it is in one game ignis dlc is also really cool he uses dual blades and it is a super fast paced gameplay it's like devil may cry full of action and man the combo meter man it is spot on like devil may cry it's just that good for gladio it's more basic it's just like when you played the main story when you want to come to the ending so what i was also surprised by is that they made a dlc for arden which is noctis's enemy and tell us why arden can be evil and crazy it's really good here before because he wasn't like that and oh my god the arden man the arden dlc is Woo, 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 woo. We can play at Noxus's starting town and if you're aware we are not able to play at the starting town of Noctis which is really sad. So overall playing the DLC is more satisfying and more rewarding than the main story. It's like they put more effort into making the DLC compared to the main story and imagine if the DLC is in the main story of Final Fantasy XV. It will be a 10 out of 10 Final Fantasy, man. I kid you not. I kid you not. Okay, that's pretty much about the DLC. Um, a bit brief and to get to know what's it like uh, when you get the DLC because it is worth it. Now, I want to go to the boss fight because in Final Fantasy 15, the boss fight is quite memorable, but it's really, really lacking. Okay, I'll give you an example. In this Final Fantasy, one of the most memorable boss fight is against Leviathan. But with this luxury, you have to know that I only press one button. There are no other buttons that I press. So this boss fight is really good for visuals. But when you play it, it's kind of boring in a way. No, it's actually really boring. Not in a way. <laughs> it is boring. Boring as heck. So just imagine holding down one button for a few minutes that really have no use and can be shown with a good cutscenes instead of us playing because if you guys show a good cutscenes with Leviathan and the combat and everything man it will be an epic showdown and it will be more immersive than just holding one button yeah imagine I mean it is it immersive to just hold down one button fuck no yeah fuck no damn boss fight in this game is quite lacking but Honestly, some are memorable, some are not, but it's mostly the same, you know. What I do like is that the boss fight from Arania with Arania, because there is something like, if you have played Kingdom Hearts 2, there is something like reaction commands, where you just press one button and then they will go into an animation, which is really, really awesome. Like, the animation is just top-notch in this game, honestly. So, yeah, it's a hit or miss for the boss fight, and... And what I also like about this game is that they support a lot of mods. I never thought that there would be a Final Fantasy game that has really good mod support. It's true that the mods are mostly um, you know, outfits or visuals and weapons, but it is still fun. Mods should be praised because if the mod is good, it's gonna make the game better. Uh, it can add to quality of life for itself and or like, you know, AI for enemies, uh, more difficult enemies, and more maybe responsive companions. So I am really happy that the mods are really supported in this game. So all in all, the gameplay in this Final Fantasy 15 is 
quite nice it is of course a bit controversial but for me i do enjoy it because of its simple action rpg and it is also open world i do like something open world but again there are some complaints that like the driving it's taking a bit too long and then all the loading screens um, because if you install it on an hdd it's not good it's gonna take so long to load it may be like three minutes five minutes it's just horrible it's literally wasting my time or your time because when i install it on my hdd i literally alt tab and you know just watch some youtube videos first and then when the load finish i came back to the game so not a good experience but playing this at level one man holy it is challenging and yeah it does achieve for a not more boring experience more tactical experience if you know what i mean so try it try playing this game in level one and see what it has to offer now if you're asking me why this game is inconsistent there is some history behind it so back then the game experienced numerous changes and challenges throughout its development before it was finally released in 2016. in 2006 final fantasy 15 if you remember it it was called final fantasy versus 13 directed by none other than tatsuya nomura who made final fantasy 7 remake kingdom hearts uh, that's it final fantasy 7 the original one of course and it was meant to be part of final fantasy 13 world and it was a playstation 3 only game and later during e3 2013 it was renamed to final fantasy 15 and experienced delays and difficulties as a result it was separated from the final fantasy 13 universe as much as possible tatsuya nomura stayed as the director of the game but the development was moved from another company's team to square enix business division 2 change in the leadership occurred in 2014 when hajime tabara took over as the new director tabata implemented some modifications in both the design and the development direction of the game these alternations include drifting from the previous concept of a gloomy and depressing storyline to a more action-packed gameplay style if you notice that even lady luna fria has been changed a lot from final fantasy 13 versus final fantasy 15 had a prolonged development process which made numerous fans worried about the game's quality and the length of the time it took it was launched for ps4 finally and xbox one in november 2016 and then after a few expansions like you know the dlc it is discovered to be popular due to its abroad open world style action powered combat system and an interesting plot with distinctive character building even though the main story isn't that good but the dlc is just where people is playing this game for so in 2018 a few dlc episodes were halted following square enix uh, alterations in their development goals the game is persistently being updated and adapted featuring a windows edition and a mobile spin-off and an anime series the creation of Final Fantasy XV was a very lengthy and challenging process marked by alterations in management, systems, and design principles. So because of that, the confusion between the alteration of the game design, the gameplay, and the combat, and the story, it is quite half-baked in my opinion, especially at the ending. It's really not that climactic. It is somehow a bad ending and a neutral ending, but yeah, it's, it is not that climactic. Because at the first stages of the game, the story is phenomenal, especially when they were pushing a car. It was just phenomenal. Like, we are expecting this game to be very good. It's like they are show-offing. It will be an open world, a massive open world game, so mwah. But then, after 4 hours or 5 hours into the game, it falls down really quick. Like, it hit rock bottom, and it doesn't go back up so yeah it's a bit of a miss opportunities uh for sure because this game if you take a look at it um this game is just so good in gameplay it is simple yet satisfying and in boss fights it is huge like huge huge and there's a lot of rpg stuff like the skill tree of course and many many other stuff like crafting unlike final fantasy 16 yeah 
There are companions you can battle with. There are mods. It's really, really good. For sure that the developer or the development team of this game really do love this game and care so much about this game but maybe just because of the changes from Tetsuya Nomura to Tabata their visions are not the same so that is why it is quite half-baked that's basically it but then again I freaking love this game hey pretty boy <laughs> let's see what you can do and one of the things that I also love about this game and quite underrated is the audio. The audio in my opinion is important, very important because people just don't realize that the audio is what makes the game beautiful such as the music, the way all the characters in the game have memorable personalities, uh, sound effects, visualization of their of their speaking, speaking, yeah? Like how they speak, uh, expressions, it's basically all in the audio. And the audio here is really good. Final Fantasy never disappoints with the music and also the sound effects. When he is fighting and when he is relaxed, it's all really different from the music and also from the sound effect. So when the Noctis is relaxed or the party is relaxed, it is like a jazz music. It's like when we are at a hotel, it's really good. And if we are fighting, it's gonna like amp up to drum and bass or, you know, bassy intense music team. It's really, really that good in Final Fantasy 15. And as well as the voice acting here, all the actors who play here are very, very talented. Well, here I judge the English and the Japanese voice acting because I only play in those two languages. And yeah, both of the team who voice acted in English and Japanese, wow. They're all amazing, amazing and talented. They are all very expressive. They know how to speak when the situation is intense, relaxed or funny or any other stuff. So yeah, very, very good. Very, very good voice acting. I have no complaint about the voice acting in this game. And the sound effects are also really good. From the shoes, the sword when hitting an enemy, it is very audible. And as if it makes the sword heavy and impactful. Just try to imagine if, for example, a sword that sounds like, a, you know, a duck when hitting an enemy. Of course, it will feel very different. And we will think that the sword is soft, not hard. So you have to know that sound effects and audio plays really, really big in any games so you have to pay attention to the audio and if the audio is bad of course it is not an enjoyable experience to have but again this game's audio is amazing in all departments so i guess we are gonna come to a conclusion and this is the overall section and we are finally finished with the review and what i can say is that this game is beautiful but the gameplay is a bit subjective because many people do enjoy this game and some other people think that this game is boring you know in the gameplay part and as i said the new game plus has no benefit so i suggest that if you want to play it's better to play just once but complete all the missions before getting to the ending even though final fantasy 15 is a very controversial game well, you know, like all Final Fantasy games, even in Final Fantasy 16, we can appreciate that the developer of this game really cares about this game because even though this game has been released for several years, we still get the Arden DLC, mod support, and many more bug fixes, etc. So, kudos to them. Kudos, kudos to them. So, let's come to the main question of this review or revisit is it that bad no it's not and the game is still worth playing in 2024 if you are really new to final fantasy i think this game can be good for final fantasy first timers of course like if you have never played final fantasy if you want to get this get this and you will have a good experience 
Of course, buy it on sale. Never buy this game in full price because I don't think it's really worth to buy this game in full price, even from the content alone. Okay, that's enough from me. This has been a really, really long review, especially for a first timer like me. And I didn't expect to review this game for this long. And I've made this review for about three weeks, I think almost a month because, you know, I have other stuff to do. And I hope you all like this review or revisit because I was inspired by another game reviewer called Skill Up, and he was really clever at reviewing things. And I want to be like him, you know. Yeah. But without the Australian accent, or can I use an Australian accent, mate? Yeah. Okay. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, keep on gaming. And I'll see you guys again in the next one. Bye for now.